previously on the pallet wood cabin build. We finished the front porch and used sticks for balustrades. We also finished off the wall that connects our current log store to the cabin. This wall is to help form the perimeter of the camp itself. As we had worked hard on the build, we thought it would be nice to get the campfire going and enjoy some time in the woods. So we cooked up some fresh squid, which was caught by my dad on rod and line. He also showed how to prepare the squid for the fire. As it is now winter time and the days are getting colder, we decided to warm ourselves up with some mulled wine heated over the fire. With darkness approaching, we finished the remaining touches for the front porch. Join us now for episode five, where we use pallet wood to create a raised bed and install a wood stove to heat the cabin.
to you. Stop.
Just walk straight across the shot.
That's better. It's certainly hot enough, isn't it? Isn't it? it certainly is, yeah. Mm. Gone away from tea. We're going mm. to what veg soup, veg soup. This is uh, sort of those fast cup of soups. Yeah. I've got a vegetable soup. Dad's got a um, tomato soup. We've come here again on a whim. Yeah. So we haven't planned big luxurious meals uh, where we're chopping up everything and cooking it all. We've literally got, because we're doing a lot of work today, soup. Um, and what else do we bring? A bit of spag bowl, like a tin spag yeah. bowl and some hot, hot dogs. dogs. So yeah. a real uh, sort of random, random uh, well, brunch sort of breakfast, lunch really. But So we've got the stove in. There's obviously mm. lots that we need to talk about in general about the, um, the cabin itself and the stove. Uh, how we've installed it and stuff that we've still got left to do because there's still plenty of stuff to do. Um, but yeah, just wanted to say thanks very much to everyone who's watched yeah. the last couple of episodes really because we sort of never imagined it would get this big. To us it was just a little project between us both and um, it's picked up, it's gone really well and loads of amazing feedback hasn't it? Oh yeah, I mean this is, look people say, oh it's really tiny. Well hang yeah. on, we're both sitting in here. Mm. Just sleep one down there, sleep one on here. Yeah. This, for, for one man, and let's tell you what this stove is. Oh. <laughs> It's this is, unreal. This is something else. Um, I mean, it's so warm in here. We've got hats and everything on because it's minus three outside, but it's yeah. so warm in here. Guys, we don't get much snow here in the, in, in the south of the UK where we are. There mm. is not much snow at all. In fact, if it snowed heavily on one day, you'd probably get four inches. <laughs> that's literally, that's a probably record figures. So we just don't get it. So we're not too worried about snow building up on the roof. No. Um, to be honest, the, the more worry that we have is, is the rain and the wet. Uh, but other than that, it, we're in a protected woodland. There's, if it's a strong wind, we're fairly well protected by rhododendron bushes, the green bushes that you see out there. As we said in previous episodes, it's not going to be perfect, but it's just the way we're doing it. We're not saying go out and build them. This is just what we're doing and we're documenting it, basically. Right, listen, you can pinch some ideas off it. You can mm. adapt and that's what it's about. That's what the human race does. It does adapt. Yeah, and you'll have better ideas probably. Yeah, absolutely. Learn from our mistakes. Original Frankfurters. <laughs> They are better than some of the others we've had. Have we've had say. some nasty ones. We've had some that are made with who knows what. <laughs> Get them in there. And I'll tell you what, it's food for kings. Actually, I'll save that one for the wife. <laughs> or Jack's. Or Jack's the dog, yeah. We'll leave a one or two. It can actually cook anything. Oh, I reckon it can. I think it might do. Unreal so far. How, how quick did it boil that water, Dad? Yeah, that was quick, I have to say. That was, and that was, what, a litre or some water? Near, yeah, a yeah, litre and a half, half easy, easy. Oh, it's away. <laughs> ten seconds, it is burning. Look at that. That's, that's this, ten seconds. This right? stove is unbelievable. That was as we spoke. That is just, look, it's there. It's bubbling. <laughs> it's actually boiling. That is just ridiculous, this stove. It must be so Yeah, d yeah if, you, if you guys get this stove, just watch the heat. It is it's called the G Stove Heat View, this one. Well, here we go. It's all done in there. Steaming away. It's steaming away. We've actually shut the door, haven't we? Yeah. Just see how warm it is. It's unbelievably we, warm. Five minutes, it's warming up. We've here. shut the door, yeah, on the, on the cabin. It's got that sauna effect in here, I think. It's, it's got a good rack flats. on the side as well. I do like that rack yeah. idea that. When it gets really hot, stuff starts bubbling, you can pull it off. And, and it's cold. cold, the rails are cold. Yeah. The blue plates are back. Right, <laughs> you know what's coming, you know what's coming. We haven't we joked about this. You say tomato and I say tomato. How come in England we call it pasta yeah. and American, they call it pasta. pasta. Why is that? Why tell us why it is? We do have some different sayings don't it we? It does, yeah, yeah, same thing. But, pasta um, and pasta. Which one's right guys? Look at this, look at this. Have you got a knife? Um, I have a knife. Oh, oh it's in, steaming. I know it's hot in here. <laughs> Shut that door. We're going to try in future episodes um, and bring a oh. thermometer, put a thermometer yes. outside so we can give you the outside temperature, put a thermometer in here and actually then you can you can get a good idea of how warm it is. Well, you can tell now because the window's steaming up. Yeah. We keep going around turning the uh, thermostat down in the winter. <laughs> Wife and kids go around turning it up. <laughs> Do you get that? So the man's in control of the family thermostat. So, our wonderful heater is still very hot there. It's burning out here. We've opened the uh, damper here. Plenty of air in there, so it's burning out. Just so you know, these are absolutely cold. Always these, are. These, Even, no matter how hot I've had that, they're always they're cold. They're always cold, so you move those. Uh, the legs are always cold as well, so obviously the heat goes upwards. Funnel's hot, 
up there and the top is hot so just let that cool down if you do want to dismantle it i just unclip it from the top bit take it away put it in your knapsack you know in the bag it comes with the carrying bag but man alive if mike doesn't take it home i will okay people uh, have been asking uh, about how we make the bed well obviously because watch is making it but i've used absolutely everything is pallet wood even down to these wide ones here which were i was really grateful to find we had found a 10 foot long pallet that somebody had an engineering piece of work delivered on um, so it's specifically made so we're dead lucky there um, so i've got that as panels and on the back here these are legs of an old chest of drawers just to give it a little bit of sort of homely look about it i made a headboard up there a piece of hardboard down the back there these we're nailing down uh, that's just regular pallet wood try and get it all the same but i've got a thicker pallet wood up here because that's where the most of the body weight will go just so people know because they've been asking us about it is i'll tell you it's in inches it's about uh, seven feet seven and a half about seven foot ten long and the width so they know is just under five feet okay 60 inches just a tad under five feet so i thought i'm allowing for my three panels here because don't forget with the pallet you're geared by the pallet width you're cutting out so i've made the bed a tad narrower at just i was going to do 24 inches which is there but we need as much space i've made it 22 inches and i've made it there you go so you know 70 inches long not six feet now it's only two inches i know it's only two inches under six feet standard measurement but it's just enough and look I, it's no question it's long enough easily that'll go right up here you can sleep here no problem not if you're seven feet eleven <laughs> obviously your legs would be out the door but it's well strong well strong the supports i've made are from a pallet that was four by two here you go just a tad over four by two good supports there i've got a support across the bottom here again all pallet wood i've used bolts to go through here to make the ledge that these slats you know, i'll show you there we've got to we've got to put some of these down with extra nails you actually ran out of nails that's made a lip for it to rest on like that so we're going to tack those down but here i use coach screws didn't cost me anything i had them left over from a, i must have had them 15 years and i thought i use a coach screw rather than a coach bolt and it bites in well the only downside is with these feet upside down this one we decided to take off well about five times yeah because every time we come for, yeah. we knock it the others are fine on the inside so that one is a spare one that one we just leave blank like that and in here we've got the cupboard stroke kitchen area bookshelf as well uh, everything well, you put books in there you put your tools up there knives up there and down here i've left a, a bit deeper there all i've done is make this from pallets specifically to the measurement here and to the edge of the door there so i don't you don't catch it on the way out and then what mike can do we're going to have an outdoor log store but also do you want to go outside at two o'clock in the morning if you do get cold no we're going to stack some logs in here as well and we've actually been sawing them up so he'll have a little inside log store there and he can put what he wants on all these shelves all the way up here now i was actually going to make the bed i said he might well put it down on the floor and he said why not bring it up and raise it on these legs and give yourself look under there that is 14 inches via nearly well just under six feet about probably five foot six of storage especially got all their tools under here at the moment but we're going to make stuff to go under there in boxes maybe a shoe rack something like that um somewhere for your tools somewhere for your co cooking utensils look there's so much you can do in here and we've got other plans down this end and on the side but that's in another episode the other thing we're going to do this is not even warm down here we're going to put a piece of metal there and a tin plate and we wonder about this is no heat here at all or this back wall but we wonder if we put say a piece of tin there and there i suppose it's sort of safety but, but we don't need it it's a sealed unit isn't it but we're thinking it might also reflect the heat back in as well so nothing is wasted heat wise that's what we're thinking again another project uh, so all we've got to do now now we know that the uh, stove is actually working going to seal around the top this is just a test run guys just a test run so that will be sealed up so no rain gets in there at all and talking of sealing up the old gaps we've got here you probably see the daylight there and in the top ridges of the roof we're going to be chinking those blocking them up either moss if you want to be all au natural or my thinking my thinking is it's got to be free and efficient what about insulating pipe cut into sections 
and pushed into there. I think that might be a good way of doing it. But this smaller gap, chink out with maybe, I've got a tube somewhere for expanding foam. And I figure if we run down those cracks, it expands, you get your bushcraft knife and you strip it off, job done. Okay, so up here, what we did notice is this, this is hot, it's still, well, I can just touch it now, it's cooling off. That gets very hot, obviously, but we're amazed that the tin round here doesn't. And then what we're gonna do is seal all around this edge, hammer those edges flat, and run some sealant, you can get some uh, heat resistant sealant around there like you have in proper log burners at home uh, and get that all sealed up. And then if you wanna take these bits off, you can take these bits home and just leave one piece of the stack probably there. And we'll put a cap over it so the rain doesn't get in there. So when you come back, all you do is put the tube on, put the stove inside. As we say in England, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> the wife's locked me up. She said I was supposed to do the washing up, do the washing, do the ironing and mow the lawn. I said, no. Now I'm locked in here. Somebody let me out, please. Actually, we're making the veranda piece today. We don't know if it's a porch or a veranda. You guys tell us what the difference is. Anyway, nice and solid. Just going to finish the other side. We might even put a step down here, but we're losing light. It's not the, it's not the coal. We're not coal with that stove for sure. It's just losing camera light and it doesn't look so good. So we want to try and make stuff good, you know, looking good for you guys to watch. So there will be a step going here. Watch the next episode. Hopefully, that's the, the bag that I that's carry the, the, the stove, stove in, in for yeah. the moment. Big carrying bag. Yeah. Big, yeah, oversized bag. It's quite nice to carry it in. Yeah. Um, but here we're hoping to have a lot, proper log store here, aren't we, Dad? Yeah. And then inside, like you say, we're going to put some smaller logs for, it, cut them up. for when you're two in the morning and you need to keep warm, you can uh, chuck it in. But I will be doing overnighters in it soon, that's for sure. like I need a little banjo now to play like on Deliverance. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Squeal piggy. Yeah. Now I keep when you see making this bow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, <laughs> I fished with the bloke who wrote that. Really? Arthur, yes, the bloke who wrote the film, the music of Deliverance. Really? And who did the banjo plunking. Well, as in he played it as well. Yeah, no, yeah, he had a whole, you know, yeah. these big tournaments. Yeah. In America fishing tournaments. He was here. Arthur Smith, I think his name was. He wrote Deliverance. Yeah, he wrote Deliverance, and I went fishing with him. 